It can be really easy in Dungeons and Dragons to fall into the trap of assuming that the dungeon master is the person that really runs the entire show, that it's their responsibility to make sure everyone is having fun and to make sure that the whole world and the narrative kind of plays out and makes sense in, in a logical way. The reality though is that's not really the whole case. D&D is supposed to be a very collaborative game. There's a lot of give and take involved. And by that token, there's also a lot of responsibility on the player to ensure that they're taking all the right steps to make sure that the game is a collaborative and a fun experience, including for your DM. So in today's video, that's what I wanna talk about. I wanna take a look at a couple of tips and tricks that you can employ in your games to really make sure that you and, and the rest of your group is really engaged to really help amplify the experience so much more. So a couple of really important things to note first. Not every game is going to play out like Critical Role and that is totally fine. These people are professionals and they have dedicated so much time to their craft. There's no point in kind of holding yourself against that bar. What is much more important is really just trying to embrace the entire experience for what it is and try to get the absolute most out of it possible. Also, a lot of these tips might not be perfectly suitable for every game and every individual in their own play style. And that's okay. Think about these things in the context of your game. Discuss them with your DM and with your other players and figure out the type of game that you're trying to, to make happen here. So lastly, before we jump into it, if you haven't already, please consider subscribing. It does sincerely help the channel in a massive way. But without too much further ado, let's just jump on into it. So where do you start with really being a better player? Well, a great place to begin is just by showing up prepared. And that sounds really obvious, but the problem is that it isn't. Showing up prepared is about having your character sheet ready, having your dice ready to go, you know, making sure that you're kind of vaguely familiarizing yourself with maybe the things that happened last week or two weeks ago, whenever the last time that you played is. That doesn't mean that you need to memorize every aspect of the game and make sure you've studied the last few sessions. It's really just kind of about getting your head into that space. A big part of being prepared also means having questions ready for your DM. Let's say you've just leveled up as a rogue. You have taken the time to go through your character sheet, you've updated all your stats and everything's all good to go, but maybe you're having a little bit of trouble understanding the difference between uncanny dodge and evasion. Ask that question to your DM, engage with them and let them know. That really signals to them that you actually care a lot about the experience that they're trying to provide because you wanna make sure that you understand your end of it the way, so that you can be properly reflecting and engaging with them during the actual session itself. If you've just leveled up and you're a spellcaster, make sure that you already have your spells and your new spell list prepared. Make sure that you know what's gonna be ready to go for the next session. That said, again, if you are really struggling to understand maybe the nuances of some specific spells, absolutely mention that to your DM. Speak with them and ask them. This really goes a long way to demonstrating that you are fully committed and fully engaged in the game itself, and you wanna make sure that you're bringing your best opportunity to the actual session itself. Next up is a really simple one, and it's really just removing distractions during gameplay. I cannot even begin to tell you the amount of horror stories that I've read online about the amount of combats and games that take place with half the party kind of on their phone, not paying attention because it's, it's not their turn. That honestly is really just disrespectful to your, to your dungeon master and even to the rest of the players. It really just kind of shows that you can't be bothered to actually be participating in this game and you're really just kind of only here because maybe you had nothing else to do. Pay attention to the game. It can be a thrilling and engaging experience. You, you really don't want to be one of those players that at the start of their turn, finally starts to think about what they want to do. You should be kind of understanding what your party members are doing, what they're getting involved in, what maybe the, the sort of risk scenario that's playing out now, and think about scenarios that you want to, to sort of escalate or maybe de-escalate. Maybe it's your idea to, to tone down combat. You're not really going to know that if you're just kind of watching a video on your phone while the rest of the group is playing. Now the next step is something I was kind of alluding to at the beginning of the video, and this might not work perfectly for every individual in their play style, but, but if you do give it a shot and it does fit your game style and your game play, it will really kind of amplify the game to, to a different level of engagement. And that is speaking in first person. Now when I say speaking in first person, I don't mean you need to be a full Daniel Day-Lewis method actor here. That is absolutely not what it's about. It's really just about adjusting simple phrasing. Instead of saying, my character does X when Y happens, or my character looks up to the sky and looks confused. Simply say, I look to the sky confused. I wander over to the guard and say, have you seen so-and-so lately? Speaking in first person is a really subtle mental trick that makes you personally feel like you're the one involved. And that can really heighten the, the level of immersion for yourself. Now, when it comes to speaking in first person, there are some things that are really not necessary. You don't need to be putting on voices if that's not something that you feel comfortable with. 
You don't need to be making accents. You don't need to be acting everything out. That's not necessary. Again, it's just that simple mental trick that really just makes you feel like you're the one who's actually doing something. Another great thing that comes with speaking in first person is describing and kind of narrating your own actions. In particular in combat, this can be really kind of fun, but you absolutely do not need to do this on every single round. That can kind of get exhausting and repetitive. But saying something simple like, I lift my greatsword and strike it down with as much force as I possibly can, cutting through his shoulders, it really kind of goes a long way to, to selling this experience to your DM, who can now kind of take that and run with it a little, a little bit. And also it gets your party a little bit more in, involved in the situation. Maybe you've exposed a weak point and now they're going to capitalize on that. These small little descriptions really add up to an incredible experience. Another thing that I absolutely love when my players do it is playing into your stats. Now again, there's a couple of caveats here. That does not mean that if you're a barbarian with eight intelligence that you're some kind of a blithering idiot. And similarly, if you're a wizard with 20 intelligence, this does not mean that you're necessarily the most obnoxious, pretentious, intelligent person in the absolute world. What it really does is it allows you to gain a pretty wide amount of latitude with how much of your own personal intelligence that you're able to impart on your character and by extension in the game and your party. Playing into your stats can take so many different forms. Maybe you're that guy that everyone knows that was super too cool for school, but is also really smart at the same time. Maybe you are that brutally obnoxious intelligent person. Play into your stats however you see fit and whatever the, the sort of motif that you're going for your character is, and that makes a lot of sense. But again, playing into those stats gives you so much more of that latitude when it comes to actually uh, engaging in role play. There's so much more that you can explore when you think about your stats in, in more of a narrative capacity. And the last tip that I wanted to address in today's video is engaging with other players. Now you can kind of put all of these things together. If you're showing up to the game prepared, if you've had your questions asked and answered, if you've removed all distractions during gameplay, if you're speaking in first person and describing your actions, so much of this can, can coalesce into kind of bringing this game to a whole different level. Speaking to another party member in first person without any kind of preface of my character wants to know if that party member has seen this thing happen, or my character wants to know what's going on. Or my character wants to know a little bit more about their backstory. Just formulating and asking the question. Tell me what happened when those raiders invaded your town. Posing your questions this way can also sort of stimulate the rest of your group to start doing the same thing. And the more that you do it and the more that everyone else does it, it starts to feel a lot less weird. It becomes a lot more natural. And the game itself will really, really feel like it's changed in a dramatic way. All right, guys, so that's it for this one. I will be doing a couple more videos on this topic because I do really feel like it's a really important thing to address. If you do like this type of content, please leave me a like. Remember to subscribe and leave me a comment down below. Let me know about some of your favorite tips and tricks. Let me know what's working in your game in the comments. I do read everything and I would love to engage with you guys as much as I possibly can. But otherwise, take care.